There's a little outing, first little outing um, since we've been in Adelaide. <laughs> Excuse the birds, they're up early this morning. Um, so yeah, we're getting the van sorted and uh, we're visiting family, Jude's uh, the daughter and uh, the grandkids. And uh, yeah, take them out for a little uh, Easter treat to the uh, the Gorge Wildlife Park. It's back of Adelaide somewhere, I'm sorry. It'll pop it up here somewhere, exactly where it is. But um, yeah, we've got a lot of uh, Australian uh, uh, yeah, native animals, I think, in here. So uh, we'll check and see what it's all about. I know the old cockatoos are definitely squawking up Winky. And uh, yeah, let's go. Catch up with you. So I might have said as I walked in, <laughs> They looked after Australian native animals, and of course when I walked straight in, the first thing you see is these ring-tailed lemurs, of which we know are from Madagascar, aren't they cute? But upon asking at reception, they do act as a zoo, and they help with breeding programs and things like that. So they do have other animals here, but they do look after things like uh, rescued uh, wedge-tail eagles, kangaroos, and other animals like that. But these guys are adorable. We'll go and check out the feeding of the kangaroos. Here we go. More, what do we got? How many white ones are there? It's like there's three out there. There's a lot, is there? And you got one down here. What do you call this one? This one looks like. What have you called it? I think it's Ava. Ava. What about snowflake? Or snowy. Ava. Mmm. And over there it looks like you got one with a, with a, a joey in the pouch. My crikey. This is what you call being mobbed by kangaroos, right? <laughs> there you go, Mum's, Mum's popped around for a feed and little Joey's made an appearance. Oh, it does not look very comfortable, does it? Some mum hot bugs. Hey, what do you reckon, mum? Is Joey having a feed in the pouch? Look at that. Well, we've just been. Uh, feeding the kangaroos and I think that's the old the old dingoes are having a big old howl in the background eh? Jeez listen to it. <laughs> They're missing out on the feed. Ooh, yellow and black cockatoo. Also um, South Australia fairly rare and the distinctive little cry. Alright we go from one size bird to another this guy and of course we know about camels plenty of them around Australia all used for the, the rail farming the gold
Well, here we go. What we got here? The cassowary is what we've got to go and find when we're in the east again up north. Absolutely blown away by this little uh, wildlife park. Got pretty much everything going. One of my favourites, of course, Tommy on the Queenslander. Rainbow Lorry Cake. Love him. But yeah, pretty incredible. What's the uh, owls and there's little gators and golden crest pheasants and yeah, all, all animals in. Just when you think you've seen them, you're around the corner and oh, here's another type and you've been here. No, I haven't been here. So yeah, pretty cool little spot to come and have a look at. So um, yeah, we're going to be on the move from here. Don't know where we'll end up, but uh, we definitely don't know where we'll end up. So uh, you'll see some footage um, on here as well when Jude was here, when um, I was doing my um, Kalgoorlie to Perth trip and um, she was here taking the kids around and she's, so she's got some photos and things so you might see some different um, blue sky or clothing changes and things but just we might have some better photos there because of the weather conditions and things so uh, be ready for that apologize but uh, hey it's the old message true doesn't it welcome back Sweet as RVing YouTubers, good to see ya. We're, uh, we're playing tourist again, we're going walkabout. Uh, we've driven from uh, Cindy's place out, uh, where she, uh, Tea Tree Gully, all the way over to here to Semaphore. Uh, Semaphore is about 14 kilometers, I think, from the main city part of Adelaide. Um, it's a lovely little uh, sleepy um, seaside little town. Very nice, just been down the main street, looks good. There's so much just going on in this little area right here, down here by the waterfront. Um, hey, just a little uh, a little uh, warning to you. Um, if you have been following, you know that um, Jude came here um, to do some babysitting whilst I was traveling from Kalgoorlie to Perth. So she did a lot of uh, sights and things, and she got some nice weather and some fun times. Just checking to make sure the old, yeah, yeah, so she had some fun time. So, um, like right now, there's a beautiful carousel just across the way here. It is, I got some little uh, facts on that one there. It was, um, I believe, one of the oldest merry-go-rounds, and uh, the biggest that went on, 1928. Um, it's a 1928 merry-go-round. It's apparently the biggest in Australia. I think it might, because there were some big ones, I think, that were like steam powered I think this was the first of the bigger ones but anyway put some facts up the top there Jude if you can um, thank you um, so yeah sadly it's all locked up but Jude had some fun times um, earlier so she can pop those in so uh, yeah don't don't sort of go hang on it was a sunny day or I'm wearing different clothes or whatever 
um, due to um, put some on from a little previous trip. So uh, semaphore, as I said, 14 Ks from um, Adelaide, I believe. Semaphore was named because of, um, they did a, well, semaphore is a, um, a description of um, communication, I believe. So they were communicating from here to Port Adelaide or something, which is a bit further up the way, but they were doing it with like flags or signals and things like that. So that's how semaphore got its name. And I believe it was sometime back in 1849 that it was first surveyed as well. Um, there is a, um, oh, we'll see if we can find the uh, water tower. I did see it as we drove in. And there's the time ball. So the, the time ball um, is behind me. And it goes off every one o'clock, I believe. And that uh, was to signify out to the ships at sea something to do with the um, rating their uh, chronometers. Chronometers? I think it's a, a way of finding um, longitude at sea or something. So uh, everywhere they need to sort of uh, recalibrate or something like that. So this old time ball is one of those. So um, yeah, we're going to go out on this lovely little beach at Semaphore. And uh, there's a nice little jetty there. Um, this uh, jetty um, or pier, whatever you call it, was built back in 1860 and uh, back then it was 625 metres long but uh, a big storm took it all out sometime and it got replaced with this new one. This coastline's got uh, quite a few jetties or uh, piers, whatever you call them. I'm just looking down this way here along the beach there, there's one and I think I was looking on the map uh, we might get down to is it Glenel, heading down that way probably today as well. I see that's got a, a shorter little jetty out there too, but uh, certainly nice to step out here and smell the uh, beautiful salt air on what's a, a really uh, lovely day. Here's my sidekick, Judy. She's been taking the photos. Good on you. Thanks, yeah. Jude. All good. Uh, just coming back from the, the top end there. I don't know what's more frustrating, seeing clear, clear water and fishing and not being able to it's catch true. anything you can't see anything or fishing in water you can't see i don't know and catch something <laughs> <laughs> i don't know after seeing all that i really don't see it's beautiful clear water really nice you can see down the bottom but uh oh what a day very nice and quiet anyway we'll go and check out the other sites and as i said i'm looking forward to maybe some fish and chips all right Check it out. All right, it's a little breezy, and you're not going to see much of me oh, or Jude because this is our fish and chips from um, a fish shop. Put a photo of where it was, but apparently it was established back in 1949. So I'm sure they've got the recipe sorted out by now. So we're down here on the waterfront for um, Semaphore. Sorry for all the noise and all the stacking. Um, then you post this over here, it's a pine ball as well. So, what's your time, say, Jude? I'd say about 10 to. So, this time ball was erected in 1875 to enable ships at the anchorage and the inner harbour to rate their chronometers. But the black ball was hoisted to the masthead at 12.57 p.m. daily and dropped at 1 p.m. by electric release from the Adelaide Observatory. So, the news on the time ball, it didn't work. Um, but the fish and chips were yummy! The only problem is a little bit of a brisk wind going on and uh, it chilled your chips too fast, but other than that, it's good. Judy's over there, she got another angle trying to get the time ball and she's going like, what the matter? So much for your facts. Oh well, back to the drawing board.
There you go. The water tower. I don't think you can fit me and it in. Gives you an idea how big this thing is. Man, look at it. Whoa, dude. So yeah, and it's a residence house. It's really awesomely blended in now. Imagine living inside that thing. Crikey, it's massive. Room with a view at the top. Hopefully Jude's got some good photos. Right, well as you may know we're in Adelaide now, been here for a little while, been a couple of weeks and uh, just getting the van sorted and staying at the, the daughter's place um, but we've come for a little drive, um, I don't know exactly where we are but it's up a gorge and we're at Gorge Wildlife Park, I'll say that again. Righty ho, well as you know we're back in Adelaide well, in Adelaide, been here for a couple of weeks, getting the van sorted, and I haven't got my microphone ready, have I? Gonna go, hello. Well, hello, hello, is it working? Yep. Interesting bit of history on the, uh, the Odeon Star over there. I believe it was the oldest purpose-built cinema in Adelaide. It was uh, changed to the Star Theatre and... No, wait on. 